Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inks and I'm from MyJS Electronics and today we're going to be finishing up the back on uh, 20 drive. We're going to set road drive there in, what's it called, uh, in remote control using MOP, which is a two button speed control. And also we'll check out the multi-frequency setup if by any chance you have missed the last two videos where we commissioned the drive and uh, other types of remote control we did. We did 2 3Y control. Do check out the videos. Uh, video links in the description below. Also all the manuals that I think would benefit you in any possible way and any other related videos You'll be able to find them in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started So our first station for the drive is uh, for this video's drive is in it's gonna look like so without trying to fall anything in it so we're gonna be having a run forward, a run reverse signal, and then we're gonna have speed up and speed down with two buttons. So that's another control station we are able to use. So for the wiring, so let me lift this lid up. So for the wiring, we have 24 volts uh, coming right here in a uh, e stop, going through e stop, and then sort of pass all the all the normally open contacts. First one, digital input one, uh, run forward, digital input two, run reverse. Digital input 3 is going to be speed up and digital input 4 is going to be our speed down. So uh, for this to work we have to make a couple of changes and those changes have to be so more or less uh, be cautious about it. So you can see down there this is where my digital input 4 would go in. So we just follow these little diagrams so you're more or less going to get your gabling correct. So uh, a couple of... Uh, uh, the things we need to change. One of them we need to change parameter where how we are going to be controlling our frequency and to do that if I can find a correct page yeah we need to go to parameter P3.3 again and uh, look at this it's, 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 it works it's like oh this is up and down working correctly yeah so if we go in here and then he's just when I click there oh it works all right now I don't know this sometimes it works weird something doesn't anyway so uh, we go for 3.3 and change that to 8. 8 stands for motor potentiometer so do make sure that is selected for your frequency control for your uh, uh, what we're trying to achieve in here and then we need to assign a couple of inputs remember we are doing this from default so to assign a couple of inputs this is a very very interesting uh, thing that I do need to I uh, failed to say in a, uh, in, in a couple of videos before when you are in this page, as you can see down there, we need to assign a, a digital input to motor potential uh, uh, up and motor potential down. So you can see down there there's numbers, default numbers, you see, so 4, 5, 3, 6 and 2, they are more or less being occupied and 1, more or less all of them are being occupied. So when you assign these two to something, make sure you deassign the ones you use, let's say I'm using 4, I'm going to want to move the 4 for P13, let's say, let's say P12, uh, P I'm going to put 4 in here, I need to make sure I remove 4 from here, otherwise it will glitch out and not work properly, or it's going to be using its closest one. So do make sure they don't conflict with each other. So that's pretty much all you need to do with I.O. is go to the parameter uh, 512, change that to, I'll quickly show you why not, 512. Change that to three for digital input three, and oh, five thirteen. We change that to digital input four. Quite straightforward, and that's all you really need to do. Your up and down, uh, your up and down uh, speed control itself, I believe. Don't quote me on it. I need to actually double check on that one. Uh, works from a uh, acceleration, the acceleration. It might be. So, so it's, yeah. So acceleration, the acceleration. So it's very much going to depend on that how sensitive your are. Uh, uh, up and down system is going to be. So let me put the cover on and we'll check that out. Here we are, the cover's on. So let's start out. So start out. And by clicking a button, your speed is going to go up. And by pushing down, your speed is going to come down. Quite straightforward, easy. If you like this system, kind of setup in your one, the one that use potential with that, it's really good. So, and then the same thing we can do in the reverse up or down. So, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how it is electronical, MLP, or whichever way you would like to call this kind of setup, works. So, next up, let's check out how to set up our multi-frequency. 
for our multi-frequency setup, the station is going to look like that. So uh, we are going to do a run. And then we have three speed uh, bit selections in there. I call the speed one, two, and three. But we're going to be getting a lot more out of that. So uh, regarding when it comes down to wiring, let me show you that in here. So we have a 24 volt signal coming to our restart. From there on, it carries on to power up all normally open contacts. From there on, the three, this guy in here, this is going to be our run signal. That goes to digital input one as standard. You can have a, this is, this is to go forward. You can have as well a reverse signal if you wish to, and then have three bits as well to uh, control your uh, frequencies. From there on, we are going to, because, because uh, uh, digital input four, uh, four and a five is already preset, so we made them, we, we, we just uh, uh, kept them as default. And we added the, the, the third bit in here, which we're going to talk about, and that's going to be a digital input six. So that's digital four, five, and a six in here. So, so that all goes back to these three in here. So uh, how does the multi-frequency work? By default, if you only have used two, uh, two cables with uh, basically more or less uh, two, uh, would be the do do in one, one and two, you can achieve actually four speeds with that because it's selection of the bits. So let me get straight to the point. So as you, for the IOs, as you can see in here, preset a bit zero assigns to four and preset to be one is assigned to five. If you're happy just with four speeds, which you could demonstrate in a minute how that works, just use uh, those two and you'll be able to achieve four, uh, uh, four speeds. And you've probably been asking, how the hell do you get four speeds? That comes from when you select your frequency controls. So if you go back to parameter 3.3, you have an option. You can have a preset speed. If you select one in that your preset speed, as soon as you collect the run button, it will be your minimum uh, frequency. So that will be your first speed, more or less, if you want to call it like that. And then you can achieve another three after that. We are going to be using AI1 because we are, just because I like it like that. So we are going to be having AI1 is going to be our potentiometer. So with this multi-frequency station, station, you are still able to have potentiometer if you wish, plus all your multi-frequency setups and to, to preset your speeds as you can see in, in here right on the bottom this is where you preset starting from 3.4 uh, all the way down to uh, 3.11 this is how you set up your frequencies in there uh, oh yeah they're all set number there so we're gonna be checking them out in a minute you were thinking how do I get these seven speeds well it's quite straightforward this uh, you have three bits and a combination of them will achieve your speed. It's quite straightforward. So uh, let me put the cover on and sort of give you the give explanation. But before we go, let me quickly show you that uh, IP uh, 3.3, was it 3.3? Yes, 3, in 3, P3.3, P3 this is where you select, as you can see, I am on F4. And you're a uh, uh, setup for, for the uh toward third uh, preset bit it's going to be in a uh parameter p uh, 5.10 and p 5.10 we pretty much select six in there so uh do make sure six is not used as you can see in here p uh in here uh, the six has been assigned as a p 5.4 in here so make sure that is removed from this guy before oh, i'm sorry so this guy in here as you can see is being pre-assigned for something so make sure you remove that before you add it down here so uh, otherwise it will be coming up with the error. So other than that, let me put the cover on and we'll check it out. So before we get started, let me go back out and let's go into monitoring mode and go to two, uh, 1.2, see what we get down here. So uh, by flipping the switch, yes, you can see, ooh, you can see as I flip the switches, you can see what frequencies you're gonna be getting. As you can see in here, that's 25. So as you can see in here, that'll be your speed one. As you can see in there, that would be a speed 2. That would be actually speed 3. And that would be a speed 4. And then I think that's the speed 5. Then this would be the speed 6. And this, as you can see, is our biggest one, speed uh, speed uh, uh, 7. So, put a run. And off you go. There we go, have a blade. So 
there we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, how you can set up, then you don't forget to remove the run signal, how you set up your mode frequency in Dunfoss Vacon drives. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll conclude with this drive. This is a very interesting drive, by the way, guys. This, this drive is definitely very more or less designed for fans and, 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 and uh, other things that would require like even like uh, the, the frequency control to be by, by, by you can, as you can see down there, you can control it with the temperatures. Woo! -hoo. So temperature goes up, speed goes up, temperature goes down, and then there, there's a lot of scaling can be done. There's a lot more in this drive, like all other drives, guys. There is a ton more. These videos more or less is giving you a chance to get used to the drive, to understand a bit more how the drive works and what is the most general application is used for. But of course, there is a ton more. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, do smash that like if you like this video and do subscribe if you like what we do down here. And don't forget to check out the description below for all the related videos and manuals and anything else that I do believe will help you out. So uh, don't forget to comment and uh, any questions to ask in the comment section below and I'll answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. Right, now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.